Hey guys, Mr. B here. Um, transferred over to my uh, Mac to try to get you guys a bit of better audio. Um, so if you hear my cat in the background, I'm just using the built-in mic, so hopefully it sounds okay. Um, here to bring you a little video on uh, tangent properties. So in class, we discussed three specific properties. And the first one is, is if we have a tangent line, if you remember, if you don't remember, a tangent line touches the circle exactly one point. So here's our tangent line. And then if you have a radius that intersects that tangent line, so here's my radius, comes through, meets at the point of tangency, what ends up happening is you get a uh, 90 degree angle formed here. Okay, so if a radius intersects a tangent point, that there guys call the tangent point, what ends up happening is you get a 90 degree angle that's formed. So this is really one of the most important tangent properties. My cat is trying to climb up on my computer here. Um, so why it really opens up, anytime you have a right triangle, or right angle, you always open up the idea of a right triangle, so there it is. So you might be asked to find any one of these distances based on knowing some other distance. So here's an example of a multiple choice that showed up on a public exam of this particular problem. So we have uh, PT is 24, that distance. Uh, point P to the center of the circle is 26. And you're asked to find the diameter of the circle. So diameter is twice the radius. So we can find the radius first, which happens to be this guy. Because if you see, PT is tangent, and then you got a 90 degree angle there. So let's see. So we got to use Pythagorean theorem. First thing I do, identify our hypotenuse. So hypotenuse to directly cross from right angles, so we're not solving for the hypotenuse in this case, so we need to find it. So in that case we have to subtract legs from the hypotenuse. So 26 squared minus 24 squared, and take the square root of this guy. So I think that's 26 squared is 676, and 24 squared is 576. You subtract them, you get 100, and that equals 10. So Remember, we're looking for the diameter, that's the radius, so we got to times that guy by 2, so we end up with 20. Diameter is twice the radius. Alrighty, next tangent property. So next tangent property is actually kind of straightforward. Uh, if we have two tangent lines uh, coming from exactly the same external point out here, and then we have two radiuses, so here's one, here's the other, pretend that they're the same distance. Um, then what ends up happening, of course you got your two right angles here, but also if we call these A and B and then call this C, we have AB is equal to CB, so these two lines end up being the same length. So we get two, two basically congruent lines. What also ends up happening is that this angle right here and this angle, well, they add together to get 180. So let's say you know these two are 90. The entire shape has to add to 360. It's a four-sided shape. So this guy plus this guy has to add to 180. Um, and let me just erase this. Another thing that sometimes happens is you get this right triangle. You get a triangle here like this that's formed. I can't get that lined up perfectly, but anyway. Um, you get two triangles here that formed, and these are actually congruent triangles because these sides are equal. And then this is just a, a shared side. So it's congruent by side, side, side. So what ends up happening, sometimes you might be asked for x and y outside here. Well, x and y are exactly the same because this is, these are equal lengths. A, B, and C, B are the same length. So keep that in mind. Alrighty, one last tangent property, and then we'll do a couple examples. This one's actually the trickiest to see, and it doesn't involve a right angle. So sometimes you might have a tangent point right here. And instead of uh, being intersected by a radius, it's intersected by a chord. So let's use this chord right here. And you can see there's an angle formed here between the chord and the tangent line. So let's call that, just for the sake of argument, 45. So if you look directly across from this chord, I'm going to create an inscribed angle. So right here like this, I have an inscribed angle. And the rule is the angle created between the tangent line and the chord the inscribed angle that comes from that chord is equal to that angle. So if we pop to the other side of the chord, then go directly across, this guy up here is 45 degrees. So the angle between the tangent line and the chord 
creates an inscribed angle coming from that same chord that is equal to that angle right there. So what I just think of it as is if this is 45, I pop to the other side of the chord, I go directly across. Let's just show you from the other side. So if we had um, this situation where I had the tangent line here like this, I'll make it a bit bigger here this time. So that looks like a bigger angle, I'm going to call it 70 degrees. So let me draw in my tangent line, or sorry, my uh, inscribed angle. Here it is. And let's call that 70. So directly across, if I pop to the other side of the chord, I go directly across, up here would be 70 degrees. So what ends up happening is you get an angle between the tangent and the chord, directly across the chord, pop to the other side, it's equal to that 70 degrees. So really, really important property. Also important to recognize is using your inscribed angle and central angle relationship that if I don't have, if I have instead, let me just draw this a little shallower. If I have this instead, where this is a central angle, so this guy right here is at the center of the circle, and let's just call that, uh, this one down here, 30, then I know that if this is a central angle, then that's double that. Because if I had the inscribed angle drawn here, it would be 30 up here, but instead it's a central, so it's double the central angle, okay? Which is just our inscribed central angle relationship. Central is twice as big as the inscribed when they come from the same arc. All right, let's see this guy in action now. So we've got this situation. So in the diagram shown, ABC is inscribed in a circle such that AB, and this just means congruent to AC. So AB is congruent to AC. And PC is tangent, so there's our tangent line. Look, there's no 90 degree angle here, so that kind of means you're looking at that third property. Um, if PBC, or PCB, sorry, PCB is 40 degrees, what is the measure of A, B, C, and degrees? So we're looking for A, B, C. Middle letters B. We're looking for this guy. So A, B, C. So again, this is 40. We pop across the chord to go directly across. So this guy up here is 40. And if you remember, because these guys are equal because of what this says, then we can say that because this and this are equal, then these two angles must be equal. So this angle and that angle are equal. So if I go 180, subtract 40, I get 140. So what that means is I've got four, 140 degrees spread equally among these two. Well, 140 divided by 2 divided by 2 is 70. So that means this guy up here is 70, and so is this guy. So they're both 70, and that's our answer. So it's an example of using property 3, but if you, can't, if you don't know property 3, you can't do this question. Let me show you another example. All right, so given J and K are on the circle, MK is tangent, so this guy's tangent. We don't have any chord angles here or anything like that going on this time. Um, o is the center of the circle. What's M? So we're looking for this guy over here. I'll put a dot on him. So if you look here, we got a tangent point here, and I got a radius O to K that's intersecting that tangent line. So that's a 90 degree angle. So we need to find, we have this guy, we don't know that guy, so in order to find this guy, we need to find this guy over here. So uh, we're going to have a little bit of work to get that guy. So remember what I said about identifying radiuses in your triangle. So if this is a radius, OJ, then OK is also a radius. So always look for radiuses because you often get isosceles triangles when you have radiuses or sometimes equilateral triangles. So if this is 25, then so is that guy over here. So that's also 25 over here. So what that means is if this is 25 and that's 25, we already used... 50 degrees of our 180 degree triangle. So this guy up here is just the leftovers. So that's 130. So this all adds together to get 180. But now if you look, I have sort of this situation. I have that right there is the center of the circle O. It's divided by that line. This guy is 130. And this is supplementary angle, so the add to 180. So this guy and this guy is supplementary because it just the diameter is just 180 degrees. So this guy must be 50 over here. So this plus this equals 180 not 500, and then 90 plus 50 is 140, so 140 subtract 180, subtract 50, subtract 90, or 180 subtract 140, it's going to be 40 degrees, so M is 40 degrees. Alright, so I know it's kind of tricky to just to hear, sit here and watch me do this, you got to really start to try these, and each one is unique, you got to really try to get your head wrapped around, okay, I got one more problem, and then we're done. So this says DE is tangent to the circle, what is the value of X? 
So if you look here, I got a couple of chord things going on. I got this 46 degree angle form between this chord and, and the tangent. So again, here's the angle. I pop over the chord. I go directly across. So this is my 46. This is my 58. I pop over the chord. I go directly across. That's my 58, which is X. So that's my answer. So simply enough, if you know that proper, you got the answer. If you don't, then you're in big trouble. Okay, so... Um, Hopefully this makes sense, guys. I know I went through it kind of quick. You really, really, really got to try it. And hopefully the audio came out good in this time. If it didn't, I apologize. Uh, if you're looking for a good graduation present for me, a USB microphone would be lovely. All right, guys. I'll see you in class.